This is Pastor Nathan Willard for Anchor United Church of Christ, and uh, today we're starting a new commentary series. Uh, we're going to be doing First Peter, um, and this is a book that's a little bit, uh, letters a little bit complicated, and definitely a little bit what we call problematic. You know, it, it is one that um, is interesting in its history. Uh, it's probably not written by the Apostle Peter, even though that's who we assign it to. Probably it's a little bit after uh, he has died. Um, but it's a, it's a message that it's a letter that's being written to a bunch of churches um, uh, in an area a little bit further east from uh, where we think of in Rome and, uh, and even um, uh, east in Jerusalem. It's sort of toward, toward Iraq and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, the uh, so it's in in Asia, as we would say, Asia Minor, um, and that's not a place Peter was really t terribly uh, concerned with. It's also a thing that there aren't a lot of Christians there until a little bit after Peter's time. Um, and I'm not going to get into why it might be attributed to Peter. Um, the theology too is a lot like Paul's theology um, in there, but that's not the part that's controversial. We'll get into that in a few days. Yeah, you know, this is one that talks a lot about obedience and submission, and it's a, a place where we have uh, what are called household cold codes or social codes uh, that come up in this letter. I want to get into that a little bit and what it might mean. Um, it's also one because a, a lot of us in this day and age are pretty uncomfortable with this letter, and I think with good reason. Um, but we want to address it. We don't want to ignore it and pretend it's not there and have it lying around for us um, to deal with. So anyway, this is a letter that's written to um, a bunch of churches that are suffering from some problems, some general persecution. Um, we don't, there's nothing specific that's listed. Um, there's not uh, talk uh, particularly about uh, Jews and Christians in this time or Jews and Christ followers, which is another reason we think it might be a little bit later on um, than earlier on because uh, a lot of those things are really live issues in early letters like in First Thessalonians, which we just read. Um, this letter too has um, a lot of talk about this being the end of the age, similar to First Thessalonians again. It's a little bit apocalyptic in that sense. Um, and we'll get to those uh, things as well. And a lot of the letter deals with how is it that in a place where you are in a minority, um, as Christians? How is it in a place where there is in particular this sort of um, concern with the emperor and the emperor's divinity? Uh, do you uh, live? How do you live in a way that uh, ensures the uh, survival of the community? We'll get into what all that means later on, um, but it's a little bit different than First Thessalonians where there is this uh, meaning of comfort from Paul. It's not quite as comforting in First Peter, although there are some of those things, um, but it's really much more about how do you continue in a practical sense. Um, we're going to go through, we're going to read bigger blocks for First Peter. I don't want to spend too much time. Um, the themes are, are pretty clear and uh, go over and over again. So we'll, we'll get through this letter a little bit uh, more quickly than we did through First Thessalonians or James. So we start with First Peter 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, uh, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, um, who have been chosen and destined by God the Father and sanctified by the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and to, and to be sprinkled with his blood. May grace and peace be yours in abundance. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you've had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith being, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. That's 1, 1 through 8 or so. Um, and so in this letter, um, here we have in this opening, we have this one core message that you are living um, that you are worshiping God in this place and that, you're, uh, uh, that your faith is being tested. And so this is where we get this idea that there is a little bit of persecution going on there, or at least some kind of out outward societal testing, much like in First Thessalonians. Here it's a little bit less specific than it is there. But it's the reminder for us all um, that we have been given uh, this gift of Jesus Christ, that we are inheritors of Jesus' tradition. And that's the thing that stays with us until this moment, that that's going to have implications. Peter's going to have suggestions for what that means. But for all of us in this day, that's the question of what does it mean to inherit this tradition of Christ? You know, Paul certainly says um, in 1 Corinthians, uh, you know, that means that we inherit the resurrection. 
um, and for our own lives, we inherit the resurrection. So what does it mean for us to be resurrected? I think in this opening message we have too, uh, this uh, message that we have the, the mercy of being uh, born into something in this way, that we are uh, have the mercy of being born into a new tradition, into being inheritors of the tradition, even if our own in our own families we have inherited bad traditions, even if in our own families we have um, inherited traditions uh, of you know alcoholism or cycles of abuse. In Christianity, we can find a new start from that. We can find a new thing um, to do and a new life to live into that. And that's ours um, in a lot of ways uh, to choose what to do with. Uh, now, that's going to be a reading that gets some tension later on, but we'll get into that later on. Uh, in this moment, be reminded that you are a an inheritor of a tradition uh, that goes before you and is a tradition of hope. This is Pastor Nathan Willard at Ankeny United Church of Christ.